Hi, I'm Coward of Coward's Kitchen, and I'm coming to you with another Healthy Helping of Christ. Today I want to, uh, I've had a couple of questions asked of me, and they wanted to ask about, a lot of times they ask about uh, what gives me the right to do what I'm doing and things of that nature. So, um, I want to just address that one one thing. And, and, I, and, and, and when I was praying about how to address it, uh, God gave me something else. He said, to, when I do this, uh, this, this Calvin's Kitchen episode, to give thanks to those people who were put in my life to bring me to this place where I am right now. See, the Bible says that in all I get and get understanding, the Bible also says that our strengths, our trials only come to make us stronger. So, in essence, it's saying to us that everything that you go through in life has to be looked at in two lights, the negative and the positive. But we focus on the positive. We don't look at, we don't focus on the negative because that only brings us down. That only uh, creates destruction and hatred and stuff in our spirit. We focus on the positive. So if we just take a po make a positive spin on anything you, that happens in your life, then you can understand more about the walk that you're in. Now, what I mean by that? Okay, a little example is this. Say if, I'm, say if I got this busy schedule, that every time I turn around, I, I'm going here, I'm running there, I gotta fly here, I'm, I got this real busy schedule. And I'm tired, I'll keep telling my wife, or I'll keep telling my kids, listen, I'm gonna spend more time, I'm gonna spend more time with you, I'm gonna spend more time with you. He'll do something in you, to you, or allow something to happen to you in your life that will stop you. Because in your heart, you truly want to slow down. You truly want to stop. You really want to spend this time. But it seems like everything is one thing is right on top of that. It's all over top of it. So you go out one day or you're walking to go to catch a plane. And you fall. And you crack your ankle. So now you have to stay off your ankle for six weeks. You got crushes. You can't go over for six weeks. Instead of looking at that as being, oh my God, I got to put everything on hold. Or I got to stop everything. No. We're supposed to look at that as believers that he allowed my, me to crack my ankle to give me rest so that for the next six weeks I can sit in my house and I can spend that time with my family so I can recharge, so I can, so I can revamp my mind, so I can re-understand the real reason why I'm doing what I do. Um, you don't learn that, and I didn't learn it. You may learn it. I didn't learn it until I got uh, learned to start following Christ. I didn't understand that the things he did had reason. Everything he did had reason. Everything he had me do had reason. And I just had to look for the positivity in that reason. You know, um, and so with today's message I want to give out is I want to give thanks. A lot of times you you go somewhere, you do something, and you don't you don't you don't realize why this thing happened or that thing happened or who you know you don't realize it and and and, and you don't realize the place that you play in a person's life and and they don't tell you about it until you well you don't don't tell you about it at all you you, you <laughs> when they're standing over your grave then they said nice stuff about you when they should have said it when you were alive but anyway I have a few people in my life that I have to really thank um, and not by any specific protocol, but I believe the first person in my life I have to think is my wife. For 20 plus years, we've gone, she stood there beside me to go through all types of issues that I, I, I've had, uh, and still have some of them. Um, she's, she's been a strong part of, my, of the ministry that he, God has released me to do right now, and I, I thank God for her. So that's the first person you're going to think. You always want to realize that your family is the ones that's in the trenches with you. You may, People out there might not see what's going on in the house, but they're the ones that's in the trenches with you. They know. They know, they know the real you. They know that. They know the real you. Okay? So, so with that in mind, I want to just say thank, I want to give, I thank God for my wife. Um, but when I first got saved, um, people, or when I first started following Christ, people People have people have these great, you know, big stories about, you know, I got saved because of this miraculous thing happened and that miraculous thing happened. You know, that, that didn't happen to me. 
I started following Christ for one specific reason. I met a woman. I was going to a friend of mine's house, and when I got to the house, there was a woman there. And the woman that was there was a was a pastor or something. I don't know what her her uh, clergy title was, but she was there. And we started having a discussion about Christ. And I'm always, I, you know, I, I'm like the next guy. I, you know, I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm, I've learned a lot about Christ, but I wasn't one of those guys that I wasn't a believer. So she came in there talking about Christ and all this old good stuff. And I was just like, whatever. So I became the devil's advocate because I like confrontation to some point. Point. I like to. Uh, uh, I, I like. That. <laughs> I like that that, that, that tension. I, you you want to tell me something? Prove it to me. Don't just sell me and think I'm a believer. Just prove you got to prove it to me. So and I, that that was always I was always that person. That, that, that okay okay. You, if you tell me the sky falling, I'm not gonna believe the sky falling. You gotta show prove to me the sky fall. If the sky is falling, why the sky falling all of a sudden? What did you do to make the fox go? You know, I, I always be. That was the advocate. But this one night, I was out, two nights actually, two nights. One night I was at the, uh, so this night I was, I met her and we're in there and we're talking. She's talking, I'm talking, she's talking. Now we began the discussion. It was a room full of us talking with her, asking questions and things to that sort. At the end of that conversation, by the, by the next night, the conversation was no longer a group conversation. The next night, it was a conversation between her and I, and I was in there like, listen, you can tell me this, and you can tell that. So everything I'm asking her, she's, she's bringing it back. She's bringing it back. But she's not bringing it back with a biblical quote, or she's not bringing it back with a, with, a, with a biblical concept. She's bringing it back to me in reality with a, with a, with, with, with a consciousness that, oh, wait a minute, this is regular. This is average. This is, I mean, this is things that... You will, every day you believe it, you don't you understand it. So the two questions I asked her, they really, they really, they really, <laughs> they took me over the top. They, they made me say, God, I gotta find out, I gotta find out more about this guy. First question I asked her was, uh, I said, I asked, I said, and I asked these two questions on the second night. One question I asked her, I said, okay, because I because you know the first night I thought on the first night I want to start doing some reading. So I came back the second night. And on the second night I said to her, I said, um I said, uh I said, okay, from the ages of twelve to the time Jesus started his ministry, what was he doing? So like twelve to eighteen or twelve to twenty-one, because he actually started doing things prior to if you read about it, he, he was doing things prior to the stuff that we all know uh, 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 in the Bible. You know, before he got baptized in the Jordan by John, he was already doing things. We just don't know about him because they're not in the Bible. You have to actually research sure and find them. But that's neither here nor there. I said, so from the time from 12 to he started, what was he doing? And she said to me, <laughs> and the funny thing about it, the funny thing that made me laugh is it's so simple. It was so perfect. She said to me, he was growing up. I said, well, he was 12 years old to then, he was growing up. He was learning things. He had a regular everyday life like we did. He was going to church, learning the Bible. He was learning a trade from his father. He was uh, taking care of the, the, the sheep or goats or whatever they had to do. He was growing up. <laughs> I said, what in the world? Wow. He was growing up. Wow. Yeah, he was growing up. And I sat back and I said, oh my God. Second question I asked her was, okay. I'll give you that when he was growing up. Okay, that was the easy one. That's, you can get that one. Second question I asked her was this. I said, what religion are you? Now, asking that question, I wanted to go search out that religion. Listen, religions have protocol. Religions have doctrines. Religions have gaps. You can fall, find a fault in every religion if you look hard enough. 
every religion. Believe me, th there's not a religion out there that you can't find a gap in, or a fault in, or a place that you can actually target. So she said to me, and this is 17, 18 years ago, 19, 20, I don't know, however many years ago, before I even became saved. This is what sent me to being saved. She said to me, she said, I don't have a religious staple, but if you have to give me a name, she said, I'm a follower of Christ. Wow. We're all followers of Christ. <laughs> we're every, we're one, every religion you have has some biblical content coming from the Christian Bible. If you grab a Muslim, Buddhist, any, you can find some part of the Bible that their religion has been pulled from. If you open King James Version in the over a hundred thousand translations you can find in someone's religion if you look hard enough you can find part of the Bible in that meaning if you pull from the Bible then you're following parts of the Bible if the Bible was set to, for Christ who are we followers of Christ we're believers she said those two things to me it was a rat <laughs> it was a rat it was over. I couldn't even. I just. I had nothing else to fight with. So my next thing was okay. Let me find out about these people. They contain to be followers of Christ. I'm gonna find me something wrong. That was that was about almost twenty some years ago. Whatever it is, whatever it might have been. I don't know. I, I my wife can tell you how many years we've been saved. I don't know. It's been it's been a road, but that's what got me saved. Because she said something to me that made me understand that it's okay not to be set in stone how you serve God. She said, after just saying to me that she was a follower of Christ, she said to me, none of us realize the true way Christ wants us to follow. Everyone thinks that they have the right way of doctrine to follow in Christ. But we'll never know until we cross over to that great beyond. Now that woman that, that told me that, I haven't seen her since that, that second night. Never, I don't even know where she's from. Um, but I do want to thank a friend of mine, uh, uh, Chris Tucker, God bless the dead, and his wife, Gina, <laughs> for inviting us over that night. And um, one more person, Pastor Gerald White. Pastor Gerald White, but it's because of your mother that got me saved. And on today, I want to tell you thank you. Now, that was that. This is now. And on my next segment, I want to let you know the walk. Because everybody always asks me what's when, when's what, what's what's what. How did I get to this point? Well, I'm going to let you know the steps and how I got to this point on my next one. So, as always, let's keep it on board! Ha! Ha!